can you hear me yeah so i'm wondering why i'm standing here i never thought that uh, i will be here so because i retired from speaking many years ago and uh, all my faculties everything you know in the dormant state and uh, i don't know how you know then when rob asked me uh, last week i said no and then elders meeting i came up a subject came up with the head covering so they asked me to speak and then uh, they promised that they are going to pray so based upon that promise and all the other brothers you know and sisters they have been praying that's the basis i agreed you know so i accepted the lord jesus christ 69 years ago i never disobeyed elders well they are right or wrong you know so when they hear they say something i will follow uh, that's the, that's why I, i am here so i don't think that nothing is accidental or casual everything is in the counsel of god everything is pretty determined so i think you know god wants me to speak here so that's why i'm standing here by the way i want to show you before i start my subject a new bible i don't know whether you can recognize it's a, the queen james bible lgbtq bible so they removed all the hateful verses from these verses and they uh, republished a queen james bible so that uh, for the modern uh, world you know that will be applicable so we are living in a world we are brainwashed uh, by the media and the peers and uh, schools and the universities everywhere so most of the people uh, they are very highly intelligent educated they may have high positions and making 200 dollars per uh, per year but still because they have no time the others tell them uh, what is happening and they believe it and for example best example is now the heat is going on 101 you know so man made global warming 90% 97% of the scientists say that man created this global warming and uh, everybody believes it but nobody has time to research even chronicle i think last week they they in tv also they say oh, well we have this uh, very hot weather and everything and then they give out if you read it completely they they had a chart from 1890 to 2020 so then there were days above 102 even 1890 1902 so they attribute the global warming for the cars and the airplanes and the factories and the emissions but there were no airplane right where they invented airplanes 1906 and the cars were not there so how did that happens so if you study uh, read and research uh, 5000 years ago the global temperature were 2 centigrade higher than present day so temperature global cooling and global warming happen cycle so when i came here in 70s every day news was there global cooling and the uh, uh, times magazine had a special edition i st- i think i have it there you know so glo- the world is we are going to an ice age and uh, that's nobody is uh, not ordinary people those people i i documented in my book uh, the latest books they received nobel prize so they don't know that 97% of the scientists when they claim that the federal government had billions of dollars they give out united nations also if you are against that research you will be booted out uh, pushed out from the science community that's why they all wanted to manipulate the data so we have to understand so today's subject is head covering the elders wanted me to speak and i am really excited to know that corona hills most of the all all the believers had a great grasp and understanding about the head covering and uh, unlike many other assemblies see if you look around and travel around if raymen is uh, listening he, he knows that he's travel around many assemblies b- women are not covering head uh, why because they say that uh, uh, because a first century custom uh, and uh, it's a uh, suppressing women 
and uh, denigrating women. So I listen once in a while the new social media uh, clubhouse in Malayalam, all five languages, uh, all the all five continents, all the languages are there, thousands of people. So Indian Christians, uh, they also talk about uh, many subjects. So they talk about, you know, head covering. They say they call our oh, brethren people are a, a Christian Taliban. That's they say it. <laughs> we are Christian Taliban, you know, suppressing women. So in my workplace, I experienced 40 years, you know, so talking to the many female employees. They said, John, you know, so my pastor is, has a doctorate and is highly educated. And pastor told me, you know, this is a first century custom. Paul was a, 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 not a married man, and he was a male chauvinist, and uh, uh, he wrote it, uh, first century custom. Then I, I asked them one question, have you read about uh, First Corinthians chapter 11 uh, one time? No, 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 I don't have to, you know, my pastor told me. And uh, others say, so now it's happening, uh, owing, you know, spreading all over in the assemblies also. They think uh, the uh, women uh, are suppressed and uh, they, are, they are not equal. But if you study the Bible formula, women are equal and some cases above men. Unless you read the Bible, with the unbiased mind. You cannot understand that. So let us read, somebody please help me, First Corinthians chapter, verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 1 through, let me see, uh, 16. First Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse uh, 1 through, verse 16. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Roy. May the Holy Spirit illuminate our hearts to understand and uh, comprehend uh, these uh, Bible verses. So the modern feminist uh, movement has uh, made this uh, chapter null and void. When they say all these things, what is your answer? Do you believe the whole Bible or some part of the Bible? So that is the question. If you pick and choose whatever you like based upon your personal preferences, personal egoism, ag aggrandizement, how can you proceed in your Christian life? The Bible is not obsolete. They say it's obsolete, but it's absolute. Is Bible behind the time? No, it is ahead of the time. So we have to understand, it's, it's, it's not a, you don't have to go to the intellectual gymnastic, you figure out all these things, you know, simple delineation can understand, you know, this truth. It's not a first century custom, it is in the scripture. Let me ask you a few questions. Uh, how many glories a man has? Anyone here, how many glories man has? Uh, what, what, which one is that? Woman, Woman yeah. 
that's an appropriate answer. So man has also two glories, glory of God and a woman is the glory. And how many glories women, women have, woman has a woman, how many glories? Two, what, what are they, Which, what are they? Man and? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's I was uh, uh, waiting. So man's glory is woman and God. And the woman's glory, woman has also two glories. And uh, one is her long hair. hair. Hair is her glory. And, and the other one? What was the other one? So these two glories are there. So in the worship meeting, what happens? Who, who should get the prime glory here? Christ, right? So woman's hair is uh, her glory and uh, she's a man's glory. So how women can cover the man's glory, how, how that happens? Roy? Yeah, covering the So by covering, it's, a, it's how many covering there in, involved in that covering? Two. Two, yeah, double cover up. So she's covering her glory, her hair, and man's glory. So here, when we say Christ is in the middle, two or three are gathered here, Christ in the midst. We don't see him physically the same way. The glory, man's glory, it's not visible. Women's glory is not visible. Christ is not visible, but it's there. So, only in the worship meeting, Colonial Hills, Jesus' glory should be displayed. No one else. But who has the authority? Actually speaking, you don't have to go too much, you know, we, we are unable, men are unable to do that. The entire power is on the side of the women. They decide that Jesus Christ get complete glory because today's worship, did we please, Corona Hills please Jesus Christ? Did he get the complete glory? Because yes, if, if they all women covered their head, that means Jesus got the He's, he's the only glory. But the whole power, the complete worship, perfect worship, is enabled by women, not man. So that's the women's power. So when say glory, woman is the man's glory, is is we were singing this morning in two songs, you know, glory about God, you know, glory is everything. So that means Women has ultimate power. If you don't read the Bible, if you don't understand, this is a simple formula. So women covering their glory, her hair, and the man's glory. So that means my glory won't be displayed, and the other believers, man's glory won't be displayed in the worship in the church order. So women has the ultimate power to give glory and honor to God and uh, make uh, the worship perfect. That should clear. If you have any doubts, I can finally give a few minutes to ask questions. Then couldn't, why, why Paul wrote this? The Corinthian church was replete with all types of immorality, and Apostle Paul prescribed corrections and uh, instructions for them. That instructions are applicable today, you know, when you, uh, when you read the Bible, you know, the Corinthian church had so many issues. The, this morning also, we heard uh, First Corinthians chapter 2. You know, Paul said, you know, I did not come with the human wisdom or great oratory. He was not a scintillating speaker, although he was a, a scholar. That's why Corinthians had a, one group say Apollos. He, wa he, he was a magnificent uh, scintillating preacher. So somebody has human nature whenever... Somebody give a great speech, you know, oh, I, I like my magical, magnetic speaker. I like him, you know, I, I'm going to follow him. The uh, Paul, uh, some, uh, some places said, you know, uh, my uh, speech is weak and contemptible because he was not a great orator, a scintillating speaker. So 
But Paul said, you know, I'm preaching Christ, the cross of Christ. That's the only thing Paul had to speak. So he is giving instructions in chapter 10 also. We say that all, you know, came from Egypt to Canaan. They all perished because of unbelief. Why it happened? For us to learn. So all these things happened. Corinthians in the infinite wisdom of God, all these God allowed, permitted all these things to happen so that it will be a lesson for us. We have no excuse, brothers and sisters, say that we have all this scripture in front of us, all this history be, before us, and if we neglect this, reject this, and our judgment will be great. And uh, that's unbearable. First century Christian, they didn't have the complete Bible. Old Testament, they didn't have the complete Bible available. So we have all these things and we should, we should not neglect this. In chapter 11, verse 3 to 11, Paul develops the whole subject of the women's uh, role in the local assembly. So, women's role in the local assembly. The subject are uh, discussed. One is headship. Chapter 11, verse 3 to 12, we see that. And uh, hair, women's hair. Chapter 11, verse 13 to 16. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. Verse 3, God is a God of order. The first quote in chapter 14, 40, it says that he insists on order in the universe. Science is predicated on the fact that this universe is based on order. This order extends to nature, animal, kingdom, also humans. It extends all, every aspect of our life. So God established order to the government. Uh, home and to the church. So government, how many percent we have? United States. Two or one? One, right? How many kings uh, Great Britain has? Really one, right? So the order, you have pets, you know, dogs and cats. Do you have any dogs and uh, cats with the two heads? Uh, no. The nature teaches that. Really one head. So that's the way we had to understand. Corporations, one president. So God establishes uh, this, this truth. The human life, the woman has a head, the man. The man has a head, Christ. The man is answerable for his actions to Christ. So man has another responsibility. Everything he does, speak, and he's answerable to Christ. In the same way, the woman is answerable to man. This doesn't imply male superiority or inferiority. Some people, you know, so when say Christ is subject to the Father. Christ is, as you all know that uh, Christ is, was not inferior. Christ is equal. Christ is God, Holy Spirit, although, but he is subjected to the Father. The same way the family, husband and wife, the order, the government, everywhere, the nature he has established. So when we buy a vehicle, or an appliance, the manufacturer sent us an in, uh, instructions and a warranty. The warranty is valid as long as the instructions are followed. The designer of the universe say that the head of the man is Christ and that head of the woman is man. Even Christ has a head, just I mentioned, verse 7. For man indeed ought not to have his head covered, being God's image, and glory. So man's God image and glory, but the next verse is very important. The last section. God's image and glory, but woman is man's glory. When I checked uh, for a research purpose, I checked uh, most of the commentaries, you know, they, they, the commentaries have a casual, uh, you know, don't explain much about woman's glory. I don't know this male dominated uh, attitude or something. Uh, and uh, but this verse say everything. Woman is man's glory. Glory, that means man is nothing without woman. Glory, you know, it's the same. We are talking about the worship meeting, glory of God, you know, glory. Here the Holy Spirit elevates and dignifies woman, womanhood through Paul. When they say Paul was anti-woman, look, you know, Holy Spirit allowed the writers, including Paul, to the revelation, by revelation and inspiration, to write all these things, at the same time allowing them to use their personal 
you know, the usage and the sentences and the ideas there, but it's all Holy Spirit uh, provide for them. So Paul is actually the person who redeem and uh, elevate, uh, elevate women. So women also can be a crown also. And uh, not all women cannot be a crown. There's another thing, married woman. Not all married women. So when they say crown symbolize the ultimate honor and dignity. When Queen Elizabeth died, Prince Charles became the uh, king last year. However, he became a monarch or emperor on May 6, 2023. So Canterbury Archbishop, you might have seen, you know, put, put the crown in his head and uh, King Charles became the monarch or emperor. So every day you said, the government, you said the crown is going to visit United uh, States. Crown is crown, crown declared. Everything, the King Charles, you know, the monarch, you know, the, the crown has a Kohinoor diamond and that, that crown give credence to that king's authority and honor and power. Everything based upon the crown. So a wife can be a crown also. Crown is the most important thing in our life. And the present life and the coming life also. What happened? What is our, uh, our reward? You know? So we are not doing you know, things for Christ, expecting a true Christian for reward or anything, although we work for salary and everything like that. But as Christians, the difference is that we are not expecting, true Christians are not expecting, because we love Jesus and we are in Jesus, Jesus is in us. Because I, leave, I love Jesus, I want to do for Jesus. That is our attitude. But Lord is not a debtor to anyone. But he's going to reward us. What is reward? One day, Raymond, a few years ago, spoke about five crowns. And if you don't remember, you know, if the CD is there or if when he come back, you can ask him to repeat that message again. What we are going to do when we do here for the real service, he's going to reward us with five crowns. That also we have to earn, but every believer will get at least one crown. But other crowns, we have to earn it. So five crowns, the imperishable crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of life. So these, are, these crowns we earn, we have to earn. All the New Testament believers, after the Bema seat, after the rapture, the Bema seat, God is going to distribute this crowns but somebody may get at least one crown everyone will get at least minimum one crown that is how the selfless love for christ and based upon that so it is suddenly it says that the one chapter below you know uh, uh, before you know first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and 25 please uh, turn the one page before uh, 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 first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 25 do you not uh, do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receive the price run in such a way that you may obtain it so you can run in many ways in such a way observing the rules you can obtain it so as we know that Olympics you know so there are many many Olympic is uh, fast runners but they broke some rules one, one time I remember that, you know, the, uh, she touched on the line, you know, so sh she had been disqualified. So many people say gold crowns, uh, gold medals taken back because they, they, did, uh, they did not qualify, although they were smart and uh, tempered, they did not follow the rules. So same way, Christianity is not a chaotic book. There's a formula for Christians, selfless love for Christ, then we run such a way, we are going to get that uh, reward. And uh, verse 25, and everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things, temperate, uh, disciplined. Now they do it, obtain a perishable crown, but for an imperishable, uh, but we for an imperishable crown. So the Olympics, when the champions got a, with the leaves, you know, they had a crown. So when they were faded away, on. But we are in, we are for incorruptible and non-perishable crown. We are fighting. That's our our life. So 
crown is the most important thing here also in in christian life also we can have crowns you know how you know the bible says you know so uh, let's uh, somebody please read me proverbs chapter verse um, chapter 12 verse 4 Yeah, so this verse also coming in a, a husband, a, a, a wife, not all wives, he says a, a worthy wife or virtuous wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like a cancer in his bones. So but people say Bible written many thousands years ago and it's outdated, but science, not a science book, a Bible is not a science book, but it has everything. It's written many years ago. So recently I have been reading about uh, Howard Medical School and Mayo Clinic, you know, so uh, that uh, one was in uh, October 1st, uh, 2019, Howard School, you know, our mental stress and uh, uh, anxiety can cause a bone decay and bone cancer. So the Bible is clearly written here. Uh, so another thing also, uh, Proverbs chapter 3.10, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. So women, even they say, why, you know, women are, you know, suppressed in the Bible. No, women are, as an overall, you know, women are glories of you know, men. And then here, married woman, just like, you know, the crown, you know, there, here also, a virtuous woman can be a crown also. But said about crown is the, without crown, no power, no honor. So that's why in our Christian life, we had to be uh, very careful in our life and uh, to pleasing to God. So Paul had a, always, you know, uh, his mind, you know, when he, we read about that, uh, why, he, why, why he wanted to preach gospel. Second Corinthians chapter 5, we see that. He had a three incentives uh, to preach the gospel, to serve the Lord. One, he says, uh, verse 9, he says that he labored for the, verse 9, which second in chapter 5, verse 9, he labored for the master to be accepted. That means Paul wanted to please the Lord. That was his incentive to speak, to, to, to preach, to do labor for the Lord. That was the prime importance for him. And another thing also, and then he said that uh, the second point was that he was thinking about other people, all the terror of the Lord. That means, you know, that after rapture, the tribulation will take place. God is going to intervene in the, in the face of the universe. And he's going to destroy the wicked people. And after, you know, the white throne judgment will be thrown in the lake of fire. So when Paul thought about all these things, how many millions of people are going to perish? That's the reason I had to go and preach this gospel to save somebody from this fire. So he was concerned about the, hum the whole humanity. That was his second motive, to preach the gospel. So that also should be that, uh, I think our chapel, our most of the believers are doing a good job about that. And then the final point he's saying that, uh, uh, verse 14, the love of Christ constrains me. The love of Christ compels me to do it. So if you think about, you know, so most of the Christians, they, if they are healthy and wealthy, well, you know, sometimes, you know, while you are late in the chapel, well, you were sleeping and, uh, you know, didn't get up on time and everything. And I asked Raymond when he come back from Africa and uh, now he's uh, listening in Malaysia, how the believers, because they, uh, the, they are not affluent like the United States, but we had to be always doing service for the Lord. If you, I, I tell them, if your car starts two out of four, if your telephone, iPhone, or works 60% of the time, if you work two days of five, if you make a house payments every other month, so how is it going to happen? Think about it. So spiritual life is just like that. It's not, you know, oh, well, four, four or five Sundays, I'm going to go and be happy and everything, you know, track distribution and everything. Rest of the time, I'm complacent and uh, not doing anything. No, so always our... 
our uh, motto will be how to please the Lord and how to save the perishing world and then love of Christ because he is in he is in me I am in him not for any reward or anything although he's going to give us the reward so that's the thing you know perishing millions of people that should be our motive and before I conclude uh, uh, anyone has uh, any questions uh, concerning her covering or any other subjects Yeah, so well, some uh, that's a good question, you know. So that's uh, I uh, the uh, Sam's question is: uh, Do ladies cover the head before baptism or after the baptism? Well, just uh, for shockingly, I found out uh, last month about that. You know, there is a then I when I found out, I sit in the front. You know, I cannot uh, watch everyone. Then I checked with the Raymond, and since Raymond goes all over the world, he said there is a system uh, in uh, many places. You know, assemblies here. Uh, uh, the lady sisters, you know, they put a head covering after the baptism. And uh, I, I found out only last week, but uh, that is not scriptural. Because when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior, you, part, you become a part of the universal church. And uh, you come and worship him in spirit and truth. Although you are not uh, baptized at that time, but delayed baptism is whose mistake? Somebody's mistakes and parents' mistake. Brother Johnson did that class last month, and a very clear, clear, uh, concise, uh, cogent teaching. And uh, Anna Martin made out to everyone. So if you don't have it, please read it. The, according to when he was uh, teaching here, this pulpit last month, in the Bible, you see that everybody is baptized the day when they accept Jesus Christ. Only Paul was an exception because he had eye problem, waited three days. That's our motto. That should be our. So head covering comes back, you know, they before, uh, before, even if they are not baptized, if they are, if they are born again, they should uh, cover the head because that, so that Jesus can get uh, complete glory. Thank you for asking the question. Another thing about baptism also, in Kerala, in the, when the missionaries time happened, uh, at that time, Sam has told me that before, you know, even night time after, with the lantern, uh, the believers went to get a baptism, night time. So the, later on, the Kerala society became, well, you know, well, I don't know whether he's really baptized, uh, he's really saved, you know, he, he, he is not very obedient to me, wait, they have a probationary period. So after a few years, you know, when they go to college, yeah, they lose the interest. In my case, the same thing, you know. I said nine years, uh, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as nine years old. So I wanted to get baptism. They wanted to do the probation, you know. So when I went to college and everything, I lost interest. And uh, then one of the senior brothers called me, and uh, he took, was kind enough to take time to talk to me. And uh, although I knew it was all the technicalities, knew that uh, it is not good to. So at the age 18, I accepted uh, the Lord as a, uh, uh, you know, the, the Lord in the baptism. So, the thing is that when in the Sunday school and uh, in our assemblies and parents, when we talk about uh, salvation, if they accept Christ, immediately with that, you teach about uh, baptism. It should be immediately, as soon as possible. You sh it's not a cultural event. It should not be wait for something. From the history, we know that. So, that's that should be our motto, New Testament pattern. So, because obedience, if you love Jesus Christ, if you become a believer, I want to obey Jesus Christ, what he says, only two commandments. Catholic says seven sacrament commandments. We have only two, uh, baptism and the breaking of the bread. So that we should teach immediately. So then this problem, head covering, you know, this delay can be solved automatically. If you go back to Bible, a scripture, everything answered there. When we take our own interpretation and we wanted to, 
uh, you know, say, well, you know, I, I don't think she's uh, ready for that, you know, her behavior, you know, she doesn't obey me or he doesn't obey me and things like that, you know. So, uh, I know many people in Kerala, you know, one place, you know, mother told the elders, although the, the, the boy wanted the baptism immediately, mother told the elders, don't give him baptism because he doesn't completely obey, obey me. So what the, after that, you know, what happened, he went to college and uh, he went with uh, drinking and uh, then, you know, at 24, you know, the baptism came in, the parents came, hey, son, you know, so we arranged a girl for you, but they are asking, well, you baptized, you know, so we cannot get a baptism, uh, get married until you baptize. So they, he said a testimony and baptized, so for wedding purpose. So this way, we miss this. When you go away from the true scriptural teaching, the abuses automatically take place. So this is my answer. Anything else? Yes. Our guideline is that that's a very good question too. You know, two or three have gathered. You know, so that means you know worship meeting not only really, you know in the name of Christ. If the two are gathered, you know that He is in the midst, uh, in the presence of God. When we gather in the cottage meeting and saying He is there, so it is applicable. It's better to have a women. You know, just like I said, you know they have the power. Whether Christ should get the ultimate glory. Not we we uh, we men don't have the power. That they should use their discretion because you know any spiritual meetings, Christ is there. Two or three are gathered. So that case, you know, it's very applicable. We te we should teach them to wear her covering always in the meetings, or meetings, not only uh, Sunday meetings. A family prayer also. Same, same ap applicable, you know, so women should cover because the Christ will be in our ministry when family prayer and then uh, the woman is not covered, you know, is Christ getting the glory there? Because, you know, so uh, when women, it's for example, you know, when, when any, any families, when women is not covered, you know, if Christ is there, the man's glory will be displayed there in any, any meetings. So we should, first of all, think that only Jesus' glory should be displayed. Any meetings, family meetings, cottage meetings, any other Christian meetings. That should be our motto. What's that? The last one I didn't. Oh, personal prayer, you know, they don't have to, you know, it's up to their, you know, their uh, discretion, you know, personal prayer, you know, they, they, in the closet, in the room, you know, they're praying alone, you know, that should be okay, you know, but uh, if they cover, that's just like I told Raymond one time, if somebody asks you to uh, walk, uh, you know, Bible says, you know, one mile, you know, walk two miles, you know, do some extra, you know, maybe nothing wrong, you know, so, but it should not be a <laughs> rule, you know, sisters praying alone in the home, you know, they don't have to because uh, that's a connection with the if two or three are gathered, you know, the he's in the midst, you know, so I think when I pray, yes. What's that? Yeah, so that's a good verse, you know, so it's a, is it proper, you know, thank you, you know, so that's a, the, use your discretion, because why do we use a technicality, you know, just that verse, you know, itself that, don't use it, try to, this, okay, if you are fully committed, try to do that, you know, so scripture, everything is there, you know, when they pray, you know, so I want to skip, you know, well, uh, three are not here, Jesus is not in the middle, you know, so I am going to, we are head covering. Always do, you know. So thank you for that verse also. So it's better applicable always for women. You know, think about the glory of Christ. That's all, you know. So nothing about, you know, the community saying, you know, the suppressing women. So women have more, you know, they are the crown and they are glory. I, I think they are equal or above man, women, you know, if you follow Bible. But if you don't follow Bible and if you go after propaganda, yeah, then, you know, you believe anything, you know. If you stand for, you know, uh, something, you will uh, fall for anything. That, that's the thing I have to say. Anyway, thank you for uh, this time, and uh, thank you for praying, and uh, uh, prayer, you know, so that's the only basis. When you all said, you know, praying, 
That's the basis, you know, that's the reason I accepted to come here. I know prayer is the greatest weapon for a Christian. It will open the closed door and it can reach heaven and the farther corner of the earth. So when you all say praying, I accepted uh, this to speak here and uh, appreciate very much. May his name be glorified. Let us pray. Our heavenly, gracious Father, we thank thee and praise thee for giving our opportunity kept to thy presence to worship thee in spirit and truth. Thank you for all the blessings, manifold blessings here given in our day-to-day -day life. Father, we were not qualified to come to thy presence. We were aliens and sinners, but uh, you sent thy son to die for us in this globe of ours, And he died in our place and redeemed us from the corruption and sin and uh, uh, all the slavery and uh, all those problems. Thank you for that great salvation you have given to us. Although our Savior is uh, dead, he was risen on the third day. He's in heaven for us. We know that our Lord is going to come back soon and will take us to heaven. After the rapture, we'll be with you, Father. And forever, and we are waiting for the, all the signs uh, in the world and uh, is indicate that uh, the rapture is very near to us. Help us to prepare our hearts. Thank you for all the believers uh, who attended here and uh, for all the believers uh, who are visiting here and all the believers are visiting our places also. Thank you for all the protection you have given to us. Thank you for all the blessings you have given to us. Thank you for allowing me to speak here. We pray everything in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.